Yu-Gi-Oh! is not just a game, it can be a whole experience. Taking a new deck you've never played before, building it from the ground up, and making it your own to eventually compete in tournaments at the highest level is just so satisfying to me. To truly get the full, authentic Yu-Gi-Oh! experience though, we're doing things the old-fashioned way. Our cards can only be obtained from inside a pack or by trading with fellow duelists. This time, we become the king of synchros. Welcome to Playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Properly Season 2. Aye. Subscribe. We are back with the Synchro Gaming, but today it's all about the staple train sprinkled with a little bit of theory as well. You see, usually with structure decks, there's a few great staple reprints in there to help supplement your strategy and allow it to keep up at locals by stopping your opponent, but in this one... We got Battle Fader. So we got a trade for all the staples we can get and set up our non-engine as well as our side deck because that is absolutely useless right now. I have also once again been constantly comboing trying to figure out what all we need to play through different interruptions but I'll talk about that once we update our list today and settle on our ratios. For now, 30 pound baby, give me the juice. Call blimey mate, just like the video. Alright, here we go. The next opening we have two... 2023 megatons here is it going to be as juicy as last time let's find out baby these tins are actually really nice for us because they have bestials in them uh if we want to go for like a bestial build or they also have labyrinth cards in them if we want to go down the labyrinth route but with how expensive druis worm is currently if we do pull a druis worm i think we're just going to trade it off towards like staples like ash and stuff because that's going to be way more impactful than a singular druis worm and then i guess we could like trade back into it in the future if we do need it in terms of quarter century secret rares in here we want stardust dragon or dark magician so let's see what we have <laughs> oh great start oh my god why do we always start these openings off with an absolute banger stardust dragon the most expensive quarter century secret rare you'll have to see it dude if this is dark magician i'm actually gonna cream ah okay rainbow dragon's actually not that bad it's also got like a couple of pound value to it so two very very nice promos there immediate value and trade bait is always nice to have all right here we go six mega packs let's dive right in in terms of commons and stuff i'm not 100 sure if there's anything maybe worth playing but i guess we'll see so starting off we have libromancer realized libromancer agent what, dude what is <laughs> hello <laughs> we just got libromancer deck color in this pack what's going on uh, dynamorphia reversion melfi wally yo cutie uh, Ichiro's Ledger Book. And for the hollows, I think there is a hollow Zalamander Catalyzer in here, so that's also something we are on the lookout for. We have Dynamorphia Diplos for our first super rare here, followed by Dark the Dark Charmer Gloomy. Very nice ultra rare. Uh, this is probably not worth anything yet. Maybe in the future it will slowly increase in value. And we have Groza Tyrant of Thunder. It is a fiend synchro but uh we're locked to dark dragons so don't worry about it secret rare is master of chaos and oh yeah there's two secret rares in these packs isn't there blackwing sudri the phantom glimmer okay first pack not terrible not terrible but not the worst thing ever we have hanshi kudo spirit leverage setup baku dragunity armor factor breath of resurrection and silver sword master okay nothing too exciting in that first pack i think darts maybe the most expensive card unless master of chaos is actually worth something uh all right paquito numero dos we have mary malfi zeo to go alongside our wally that we pulled and a pity let's go scareclaw astra we have libromancer bonded and ice jade creation agiro cassis and a first appearance here for the libromancers hollows are theory on stand up super rare very cool ultra rare is ultimate fusion let's go baby blue eyes card and dynamorphia stealth bergia secret rares come on bestial lubellion would be nice druis worm would be epic magna would be nice just to keep in play we have ariana the Labyrinth Servant, very, very good pool. I don't even know if we want to trade this off. We might just keep this and start trying to Theory Labyrinth even more. We'll see, we'll see. Second secret rare is Exo Sister Michaelis. Okay, we actually got something, which is nice. Michaelis, I don't know if it has much value to it. Branded Regained as a rare, very funny. And nothing else too exciting in here. We got Leonidas to stop that Mind Burn deck. Let's go. Rounding off the first tin with our third pack. What do we have in here? Amphibious, Bug Growth, MK11. We have Sonic, 
Libromancer, Fire Burst. There's a lot of liberal cards in here. Uh, Haunted Zombies. Speaking of, Magic Girl, uh, Scarecloth, Sclash. We have Soul Scissors as our super rare. Dynamorphia Domain. Actually, not a bad ultra rare in the deck here. And Amazonis Augusta, Big Fusion Ultra Rare Monster. Secrets are Link Beyond the Pendulum. Very cool. And Cash Zero baby. Let's go. I forgot that was in here for some reason. I think Drew's Worm's the most expensive card in the set. Or no, Fenrir's the most expensive card in the set. <laughs> we pulled a fucking Fenrir. Oh my god. Okay. Trade bait, baby. Trade bait. I would. Uh, can we play Fenrir? I would like to play Fenrir, but it clashes with Crimson, so it's a little bit awkward like that. Uh, probably better just trading this off for things like Ash. Yo, I can't believe we pulled Fenrir, dude. Uh, we have the little blue thing. Still be Torby. Yo, actually, nice. In case we do build Labyrinth. Danel, Ninjutsu, Senate, Stars, and Twin Shadow. All right, tin number two. This is going really well so far. Yo, imagine we get two Fenrirs. Can you pull the same, like, secret in the same tin? Like, can you get two Fenrirs in one tin? That would be crazy. Uh, all right, Triantis. Yo, the Preda plants. It's all archetypes together, if that makes sense. In these packs, it's weird. Libromancer, Brilliant Rose, Gem Knight, Lady Rose Diamond, Empress, Alasia. All right, Smoke Mosquito for our super rare. Ultra rare is Runic Slumber. Uh, runic Tips, also a nice secret rare to pull. And we have Therion Reperfume. Some of the Runic cards might actually be side deck worthy if we put like Flash and Fire or whatever. Uh, we have Visa Starfrost Secret Rare. This might be worth like a couple of pounds. Manadium is doing really well right now. And Hugin, the Runic Wings. I don't know if this is worth anything. Tip definitely is. Hugin, I'm not 100% sure. Very cool. We have Mitsu, Labyrinth Archfiend, Armor Factor, and yeah, nothing else there. Okay, Whew. two packs to go, baby. Two packs, what are we gonna get? Melfi Penny, we have Predipant Biblis, Dynamorphia Shell, Reversion, Scareclaw Acro, and Misty Girl. Theory on stand-up, yeah, we got Duplicate Super Rare. Uh, how many Super Rares are in this set? Like, seems like not that many. We have Wandering Griffin Rider, can get started on our adventure package, I guess. And Odai's Pendulum Graph Dragon, Secret rares are Fusion Monster, another Master of Chaos, bro. What's going on? Come on now. And Blue Eyes Jet Dragon. I think this is actually worth something as well. Like, actually a really nice pool. Sick. Okay. Blue Eyes Jet Dragon. Very cool. We got Branded in Central Dogmatica. Uh, Ku Clock to go alongside our Labyrinth Core. Very nice. And yep, that's all from there. Final pack. Come on. I'm happy with what we've got. We got the Stardust and the Fenrir. That's like 30 pound plus in value so uh, anything else is just a cherry on top bro we got libermancer firestarter crosskeeper ice jade dynamorphia boot zombie reborn merry malfies all right here we go the weather painter moonbow for our super ultras we have blackwing zonda the dusk and spellbound yo that could actually go on our side deck that's funny secret rares we have show me an effect monster Xyz and a Synchro. Okay, uh, nothing's coming to mind. Kashtira, Shangri, Era, and Psychic Can Punisher. Oh, Red Eyes, Zombie, Dragon, Lord. Okay, very cool. Two kind of duds in the Secret Rare slot there. Any Labyrinth cards? Nope. Okay, very nice opening overall, dude. We got a Fenrir and a Stardust Dragon, plus a couple of nice little bits like Ariana and the Blue Eyes Jet Dragon. Definitely some value here. Trade Binder. It's gonna look very juicy. Sheesh, we are actually playing on easy mode, man. Our pools are nuts right now. This is perfect though, to trade into all the lower value staples that we need, like Ash and Imperm. The interesting thing when it comes to figuring out which non-engine to play is that a lot of good cards kind of conflict with Crimson Resonator. It requires no monsters on field to special summon itself from hand, so playing things like Nibiru, Fenrir, Bestials, and Phantasme all conflict with what is potentially our main combo line. If we wanted to play these cards, we'd probably have to pair them with with, like forbidden droplets to get them off the field but droplet is too expensive right now at least until we get the rarity collection reprints we gotta focus on the cheap stuff for now so let's hit up our local scene see what people have going and get our deck tournament ready baby <laughs> This little pile of cards here is all we need 
to take our deck to the next level. Also, forgive the audio, probably sounds like shit. My uh, microphones apparently stopped working. And I'm away to France tomorrow, so I don't have time to spare to go and fix it. But anyway, here are the spoils. One I forgot to mention in the last episode is Q-Belt, the Blade Dragon, a level seven Dark Synchro. When it's summoned, it can target a card on the field to destroy it. We got this as part of the trade with Kami in the last episode. Uh, it was just in my extra deck, so I forgot about it. And then moving on from there, it's all aboard the staple train, baby. So we traded with Chris. He wanted the quarter century Stardust Dragon and a few of the Dynamorphia Hollows that we pulled out of our tins. And in return, we got a nice little play set of common Cosmic Cyclone for the side deck. Rare Book of Eclipse from Tactical Masters. This uh, synergizes with Red Dragon Archfiend. It's also just a very good card. Depends on the decks you go up against, to be honest. At our locals, maybe not as good, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. We also got a classic side deck staple Three super rare evenly matched. This is getting reprinted in the rarity collection, but you know what? I thought we might as well grab it early so we can do some damage at locals as soon as possible. And then we also got a feather duster and that was the trade for the Stardust plus a bunch of hollows from the tins. We then traded with Jamie for a play set of DD Crow. He took the Hugin, the Dark, uh, Runic Slumber, and I believe the spare super supernova dragon that we had from our third structure deck. And then with Jess, we traded her the Fenrir and the Blue Eyes Jet Dragon. Yes, it's a bit of a big trade for three Ash Blossom to go in the main deck and three Infinite Impermanence. She actually gave us three Cyber Dragon structure decks. Uh, we only needed the Imperm though. So yeah, I guess we have spare Jizu Kirus in the binder if we ever need a Kaiju in the side deck. But yeah, this is gonna cover the main deck non-engine lineup that I think works best right now. DD Crow is also really nice because it helps make your Dispatter live for a negate. So it's got sort of additional utility in our deck. Also funny, Ash Blossom is a tuner. So if you ask your opponent, that's an extra 500 attack for a Supernova Dragon. It's just funny, you know? But uh, yeah, a whole load of staples that we can add to our main deck and our side deck, allowing us to now effectively stop our opponents from just playing with themselves turn one. So we're gonna slap all these in the deck and come back with the updated deck profile. And then I'll go through the theory and uh, how we can play through hand traps with some of our combos using our list. All right, here we go with our new and improved tournament ready deck list. Uh, honestly, we near enough have basically all we need at this point to be a full competitive court. Well, not competitive, but like we're near as good a pure build as you can get for pure resonators here. So getting into the main deck, there are a few uh, budget choices right now that we will fix in the future. But getting into our list, we are, of course, playing the three Crimson Resonator because it is a piece of our most resilient and strongest combo lines. Three Resonator Call, obviously. Three Bone Archfiend. We're starting off with all the obvious choices. Uh, the Foolish Burial as well because this is an additional extender and one card combo. Bone Archfiend is a one card combo. Uh, we're also playing the triple Crimson Gaia, obviously. And we are playing three... Soul Resonator. Now, I kind of want to cut this to two because all of the soul lines are a lot more fragile than the Crimson lines. And seeing Crimson plus soul doesn't really help you play through certain hand traps. Like if you get stopped on the soul and you have nothing else except just Crimson, you literally can't do anything. So with Crimson being the more resilient line of play, I kind of want to drop down on the soul and find another engine that works with Crimson. I have been labbing some things around and the one thing I do kind of want to try and make work is like a small Vanquish Soul engine because Crimson plus stake your soul, blah, blah, blah. It allows you to play through deep barrier and stuff. This is all a good number of episodes down the line when we start exploring different engines. But yeah, I am currently looking at the Vanquish Soul engine to fix some of the weaknesses we have. Anyway, back to the deck profile. Uh, I'm playing three Resonator Command. This is our budget option for Pot of Prosperity because we either want to get one of our starters or one of our combo pieces, whether it be Crimson or Bone, this can start both of those pieces. Also with it being a quick play, you can fire it off in the draw phase and avoid the Droll for one search. And once you get your combo pieces in hand, Droll does not matter. I am a little iffy on the card though because we have dropped down our Resonator monsters to include more non-engine. For example, we are down to two Vision Resonator, uh, in theory, you could play one, but while going through a bunch of theory and testing against interruptions, the second vision does come up in instances where you want to dump one with bone to search crimson to add the second vision to special summon itself, allowing you to end on an interruption through uh, certain hand traps. And then we are playing the one 
Synchron Resonator. You only need the one for most combo lines, especially through interruptions. I guess if you're in a grind game, the second would come up, but uh, one's fine for now. And that is essentially our Resonator package. We then move on to our Triple Supe Duskwalker and the Brick. This is our best early game extender that blends well with the rest of our deck. For example, Supe plus Crimson is full combo. If you get stopped on Soul and you have Supe, you can still at least like make a Ryzen and then go into Abyss. It allows you to play in situations where you otherwise wouldn't, but on its own, it doesn't do anything. It's an extender, not a starter. So uh, yeah, if we do find another engine to sub in, Supe can in theory come out. And then for our Fiend extenders, like I said in the last episode, we need Zalamander Catalyzer to be able to play through Nibiru. We have the obsessive UV loop because one of the other combo lines that involves Crimson plus Soul does actually require the obsessive UV loop to play through Nibiru. We were figuring that out in the last episode and we have figured it out now. We do need the UV loop. And then we also have one Wandering King Wild Wind as well. Not only is this a extender that you can play into Crimson, but we need to play this to play through Shifter. The Crimson plus Bone combo cannot play through Shifter. Soul on its own as a one card combo cannot play through Shifter. Crimson plus Soul, however, while playing Wild Wind, is combo, gets you to Dispatter plus Abyss. I'll show you that in a sec. But yeah, we do need to play one to give us an option at playing through Shifter. And then rounding off the engine cards, we have one Red Zone and one Fiendish Golem, because there are situations where you'll just lose to a hand trap. For example, you're forced into a combo line and that combo line gets nibiru you can at least end on a Fiendish Golem as a backup plan. So yeah, that is our full engine for now. Getting into the non-engine, we have Called by the Grave to potentially stop hand traps like Shifter, Droll, Ash, you know. We of course have our newly acquired three Ash Blossoms, three Impermanence, two DD Crow, because we are also playing one Skullmeister, which is searchable through Soul. If we have a completely gas hand where we don't need to search anything specific with Soul, we can just add ourselves a Skullmeister as an additional form of interruption. It's subbing in for the third crow. Kind of does the same thing. They both fit graveyards. But yeah, it is nice to search this just as an additional interruption when we can. Overall, this is 41 cards. I couldn't be bothered figuring out what to cut, so we just decided to play 41. But yeah, it's definitely shaping up nicely. Extra deck doesn't really ever change, to be honest. We have the three Red Rising Dragon, two Scards, two Red Dragon Archfiend. We have the one Scarlight, Double Abyss, one Q-Belt, really good card. You actually need to play this for the Shifter line, actually. We're also on the Dispatter, one Supernova, one Bane, and we are playing one Calamity, not to lock our opponent on their turn, but turn three are going second. Um, if our opponent's playing conservatively with their interruptions, we can just go into a Calamity to turn everything else off and then just go for the kill. It was a flexible spot, so we might as well play the Calamity in case that does come up. And then moving on to the side deck that actually matters now, we have Triple Evenly Matched, Triple Book of Eclipse, Double Cyclone with the Harpy's Feather Duster. We are playing Double Effect Veiler to sub in for like the two Crows, for example, against decks that don't really care about the graveyard, but they do lose to monster effects. Uh, one Red Resonator potentially for time, one Archfiend Decentric, searchable back row removal. So for example, if our opponent flips Tikaboo on the Summon of Soul, we can add Archfiend Decentric and then scale and then pop the Floodgate and hopefully go from there. Uh, yeah, searchable back row removal. Decent inclusion, to be honest. We have the one Spellbound that we pulled because it is a good card and the one Summon Limit that we pulled because it is a good going first card. Real Kitchen Sink of a side deck here, but it's better than what we had. So we take it, we take it. Now, with that being said, I mentioned a lot about combos and playing through hand traps. So let's talk about that. Okay, so I have been solitaring, theory crafting, and playing by myself a lot with this deck. Uh, that sounded quite funny, but <laughs> essentially we have three main consistent sources of combo lines here. I also have my notes. <laughs> written on envelopes because I couldn't find paper, okay? So this is where my desire of going a little less heavy on the soul combos come in. Uh, for the one card combos, so if you go uninterrupted, you have either Supernova plus Red Zone or Dispatter plus Abyss plus Fiendish Golem. However, if you get Impermed or Ashed on Soul Resonator, you end on nothing, okay? If you add Bone, you summon Bone, dump Crimson, go into the Red Rising to summon back the Crimson. If you get Impermed on the Rising, or if you get Bistealed or Crowed, on the Crimson, you end on nothing. If you get Nibiru, 
you literally just end on the fiendish golem regardless of where the Nibiru you, which is, you know, not a whole lot on its own. If you get shifted, this also does nothing on its own. It can play through Droll if you start with Soul, but if you start with something like Resonator Call or Crimson Gaia into the Soul, then Droll just kills you as well. So this on its own, while it is nice to have a one card combo, it literally loses to everything. Now, if you compare this to Crimson plus Boner, almost no hand trap in the game except Shifter completely stops you from ending on interruptions here. So uninterrupted, obviously I showed you the combo in the last episode, you end on Supernova plus Red Zone plus Abyss. Against Imperm or Crow or Bestial after you summon the Red Rising Dragon and you're going to summon back the Crimson Resonator. If that gets stopped, you can still end on Abyss plus follow up. If the Crimson Resonator gets ashed or Impermed, you can still end on Abyss plus Fiendish Golem. If you get Nibiru'd, like I showed you in the last episode, you can end on Abyss plus Fiendish Golem as well. Droll doesn't stop you if you open these two combo pieces. You still manage to get to Supernova plus Abyss. You do miss the Trap Search, but uh, Supernova plus Abyss is still nice. Shifter does turn off everything, so that just sucks to suck, I guess. Thankfully, you can play through Shifter uh, by searching Soul with a lot of your consistency cards. And then if they do, for whatever reason, decide to Nibiru you at the end of the main phase, uh, you still have Supernova plus Red Zone, so that's double Supernova Banish. So Crimson plus Boner is actually really resilient and plays through interruptions a whole lot better than just the one card combos on Soul. Oh, I mean, obviously one card combos are very vulnerable in general. Where things get interesting from there is Crimson plus Soul you would expect to allow you to play through a whole bunch of other hand traps. So being able to search the piece that you need should be really good on paper. However, it's not because if you have Crimson plus Soul and nothing else, you're still losing to Imperm and Ash on the Soul. If your opponent allows that to go through out of fear of Bone Arch Fiend in hand, and then they stop you on the Crimson effect, you still get to Dispatter uh, plus some big guys like Scarred Red Dragon Arch Fiend. The good thing is that you can play through Nibiru with these two as well. So these two plays through Nibiru, these two plays through Nibiru, this on its own doesn't. And that's why we need the UV loop in the deck. This combo plays through Shifter. This is your only way of playing through Shifter, so obviously you need to play both. And seeing both also plays through Droll as well. The issue is that Ash and Imperm are the most common hand traps in the game, and both of these lines essentially lose to Ash or Imperm on the soul, assuming you have no extenders in hand. They're just kind of forcing you onto Better Have It, and your Better Have It is literally Bone Arch Fiend. To sum all that up, this kind of combo line is very good and very resilient, and therefore I want to focus on this and expand upon this and find another engine that could also work like this. So that we can cut down on our choke points here that lose to literally Ash or Imperm, and that would at least make her deck a bit more competitive. I don't know if any of that made sense whatsoever. I'm totally just rambling, but um, I'll just show you how we can play through hand traps, okay? Okay, so here is what we end on after our opponent stops our Crimson. So we special Crimson and normal summon the bone, Synchro these two into Red Rising Dragon. Red Rising Dragon effect summons back the Crimson. We activate Crimson effect to summon two from deck. Our opponent goes Imperm or they go Ash. Okay, so Crimson has been stopped. Where do we go from here? Well, Bone Archfiend sends a card from hand to grave to special summon itself. It then activates its effect to target in Red Rising Dragon. Dumps a Vision Resonator. Vision Resonator adds Crimson Gaia. We're going to increase the level of Red Rising Dragon by one. So it's seven. Uh, 7 plus 2 is going to make our Abyss. And then we can activate Crimson Gaia. And Crimson Gaia is going to search for Fiendish Golem. So through an interruption on our Crimson Resonator, we have Abyss Negate, follow up in the form of Gaia, and a Fiendish Golem Banish as well. Which is better than losing to one hand trap. Next up, what if our opponent stops the Red Risen Dragon so we're actually unable to summon the Crimson Resonator? For example, we Special Crimson... Normal summon Bone, summon the Red Rising Dragon, effect target Crimson. Our opponent either Imperm's Red Rising or Crows or Bestials the Crimson Resonator. What do we do now? Well, Bone Archfiend effect, send a card from hand to special summon itself. Effect target Red Rising Dragon, send Vision, increase its level by one, so it's level seven. Vision Resonator activates, adding Crimson Gaia. We activate the Crimson Gaia and activate the effect to search the second Vision Resonator that we play. Special summon, and then two plus seven, makes our abyss so we at least still end on abyss and we have follow-up in the form of gaia plus bone archfiend assuming our opponent clears the archfiend which again is better than nothing all right next up is going to be playing through shifter with soul resonator and crimson resonator and this is why we play the wild wind so we special crimson our opponent activates shifter we then normal summon soul and activate the effect to add the wild wind 
Special the Wild Wind, three plus four. These get banished, of course, into our Q Belt. Like I said, we have to play this as well for the shifter line. We can then activate Crimson's effect, summoning out a two and a one. So Vision plus Synchron, we go seven plus two into Abyss. And then we go nine plus one into Dispatter and Dispatter can summon back the Abyss. So we have a pop and we have a negate. However, our opponent is also under shifter. So most likely we'll have the Dispatter negate live as well, giving us a bit of additional flexibility. Then obviously when it's our turn again, Dispatter can summon back whatever from the banner zone. And the final combo through interruption we're gonna go through here is Soul plus Crimson into Nibiru. So special summoning Crimson and normal summoning Soul. We would activate the effect of Soul to add Bone. Bone's gonna send a card from hand to grave to special summon itself. I'm gonna activate its effect, target and soul, dumping the obsessive UV look to increase its level by one. Four plus four is gonna make Scarred. And then we can activate the effect of Crimson Resonator, special summoning, vision, and Synchron. Now, if we get Nibiru here, we have a stronger end board, but if our opponent waits until the end of the main phase and then Nibiru's, it hurts us a lot more. So it depends on your opponent knowing when to drop the Nibiru. However, we do end on at least an interruption either way. So let's say our opponent holds it until the end of the main phase, the most optimal place for them to drop the Nibiru. We would go Vision plus Scarred into Dispatter. Uh, that would go Chainlink 1 Scarred, Chainlink 2 Vision. So adding Crimson Gaia and summoning out the Red Dragon Archfiend. We then go Synchron Resonator plus Red Dragon Archfiend into the Abyss. And Synchron is going to add back the Vision Resonator. We're then going to activate the UV Loop in Graveyard, banishing specifically the Red Dragon Archfiend to add itself back to the hand. We'll activate this pattern to special summon the Red Dragon Archfiend. Then we're going to activate the Crimson Gaia and Crimson Gaia effect is going to add the Red Zone. Set the Red Zone and attempt to end turn. If our opponent doesn't have Nibiru, Red Dragon Archfiend will trigger, protecting our board with Soul to have a live pop on the Dispatter. However, if our opponent does have Nibiru, end of main phase, they're gonna tribute everything and the Nibiru is gonna come down. Continuing with the main phase, we can then activate the second effect of Obsessive Enhance, banishing either the Abyss or the Dispatter to summon back with the red zone. So most likely you are going to banish the Abyss to special summon Uvia Loop. Then on your opponent's turn, you will flip the red zone and red zone will summon the Abyss. And of course you still have the Gaia. So the Gaia is gonna trigger when something gets destroyed on field, you can summon back the Scarred and that will give you your pop on the red zone as well. So yeah, a lot of theory, a lot of uh, playing through interruptions and different combo lines to memorize and whatnot. It's weird because sometimes you'll try and play around one hand trap and then end up playing into another. We're taking it step by step. We're getting deeper and deeper into the depths of this deck. So yeah, no idea how long this video is at this point, but uh, yeah, let's head to locals and test out our newly acquired hand traps, baby. All right, for today's feature match, we're up against Reese playing his live twin Melfi Sprite deck. We win the die roll, so we are going first. And with that being said, it's time to duel. Yeah, good luck, sir. Oh, 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 look, have fun. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Stand by me. Yeah. Set one. Oh, Jesus. Past turn. Wow. Okay. This is not normal for this deck. For yeah. Please do the same. Uh, possibly. Depends. Thumbnail. Yeah. Normal. Oh. Attempt effect of this. Yeah, go on. That's fine. Show me show me the rest of the deck. I'll try. Especially that. Yeah. True for Kiskel. What? Go Kiskel effect to reborn the UL. Yep. Yep. All effect to reborn the Kiskel. Yeah. And then you can like, summon while I control a hold on deck. Yeah. Trouble Sonny. Pause the Swim for three. On declaration, we'll activate target Trouble Sonny. And then we will choose. Yeah. And um, all those effects is not one. Swim for two. Take. End phase. Cali effect. Yes. Please. <laughs> Here we go. Go for turn. Thank you, Cats. Stop it. Pass. 
Anything on res? Nope, you're all good. Nothing on res. Okay. Activate Bone Arch Fiend. Send the Grave of Rust. Special summon itself. Does Super do anything in the Grave? Nope. Not the Grave. Just a Garnet. Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, on the final summon, phase. we'll go Kavi. Sure. And the final phase, yeah. evenly. I've done it online, but I never played the Milky Package. Penny 1, Milky 2. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Special. Yeah. Four plus three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright. Effect targeting. And then after effect, I'm going to try and draw. Tactical battle. On entry battle. Fighting floodgates or floodgates. I yeah. See. I see. If you didn't summon one at me, I would not have been using it. A bunch of heralds. Oh, I can't Two. Is that one? Uh, is that two? Uh, Special jet. Jet. Yeah, that's fine. Gigantic. 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 Yo, that's great. Banish to Yeah, yeah. Banish Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that really does struggle to be over and yeah. <laughs> over It's unfortunate that you were. Yeah. Arch fiend effects, so 94 costs. Sure. If I can. Special summon effects. Target itself. Yeah. Send vision. Effect on the spell trap. It has to go about this. Go unicorn effect. Target. I don't got it. I would stop a battle phase. Yeah. Uh, attack. Sure. For one one now, you beat the last Titan phase. Oh, the Titan phase. To be fair, last thing you fit you're so high and mighty because you're a YouTube. Right. Money for a living. Okay. <laughs> 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 Main two. Yep. Yeah. 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 Ye
Holy. Mate, it feels so good to win a game through Grave of the Super Ancient Organisms because fuck that card. That was round two of Locals. Round one, we played against Daryl's Dragon Link, and this was his first time playing the deck, so his plays weren't like completely optimal, but it was still a really fun match. We did take that 2 0. Round three, we played against Nathan's Unchained, and we lost to Daryl, but he bricked game one, so we managed to take the dub. Game two, he anti spelled us, and game three, we went full combo against no interruptions, and that was enough to stop his board. We had Ash for the Eclipse as well, and that's GG. This takes us to the final round at table one against Walker's Dragon Link, and this was a crazy match, literally trading hand traps back and forth. It's always just a pretty much simplified game state. We get Nibiru multiple times, uh, we win game one, game two he takes the win, and then game three we get drilled two turns in a row. It almost came down to the wire, but then we got eclipsed for four, and that was the end of it. Time gets called, and we lose. So once again, ending on a 3-1 record, but this time we get second place, baby, and a whole bunch of packs. So it turns out I didn't actually record the pack opening, but thankfully we didn't pull anything too crazy. Uh, we got another angler out of our OTS pack, and then we had four Age of Overlord, so we pulled a Snake Eye Ash, Vita Clarcanum, fire recovery and a synchro rumble which people are like oh yo you should play that no it's bad and it's unsearchable so we can't play that but yeah i'm literally away to jet on holiday literally right now so i'm uh, gonna quickly slap this at the end of the video and see you in a week bye bye my catch a tan let's go